The following is a presentation of RJL 518 Sports Network. Good evening, everybody. This is Robert, RJL 518, welcoming you back to another edition of Inside Pitch, the 1964 One and Gone Tournament. This is Game 6. We are here at Memorial Stadium as the number 9 Milwaukee Braves will take on the number 6 Baltimore Orioles. In 19... In, um, in 1964, the Braves had a record of 88 and 74. Baltimore was 97 and 65. And there is the bracket, as you can see right now, as Cleveland, Minnesota, the Cubs, Houston, and the Dodgers with an upset over the Cincinnati Reds in the last game. And for those of you who don't have not seen that, you should check that out. A game between Koufax and O'Toole was a lot of fun to play. But here tonight, it's Baltimore and Mil hosting Milwaukee in a big matchup here at Memorial Stadium. And it's going to be Tony Cloninger uh, pitching for the Braves, and Wally Bunker will pitch for the Orioles. And I usually take the team, the, uh, the, play, the pitchers with the best ERA, starting pitcher, the best ERA that year as the number one, two, three, and four, you know, and as we go so on and so forth. Remember, there is no fatigue, so all the relief pitchers are available at every game. And, of course, there is no roster limit, so if there is a card for this team, um, if there is a card for the team in the pack, they are on that team, and there is no roster limit for this tournament. So everybody is available and uh, should be fun. Memorial Stadium. A very other, another older ballpark that Baltimore played in, and the Milwaukee Braves are going to have it. We got some hall. Of course, we have some Hall of Famers in this game, so this should be a lot of fun to play. Starting pitcher for the 1964 Baltimore Orioles will be Wally Bunker. He was 19 and five with a 2.69 ERA. He will get the start today, and he can face off against 29 batters. So before be before being tired. And let's get started. So let's go. Let's play some ball, shall we? Top of the first inning, I'll introduce the players as they come to the plate. Leading off for the 1964 Milwaukee Braves will be left fielder Rico Cardi. Let's go. Wally Bunker starts with a 6-5, and that is a possible error. Rico Cardi, 6-4, that is a double automatically into right field. And the hit the right fielder is Bowens. His error rating is a four and 11 on the dice. He's not going to make the error, but a leadoff double by Cardi. That's a good way to start if you're the Braves. He will hold at second. And the next batter is center fielder Lee May. Anything on the strat die? We'll see here. An eight, nothing going on. Infield is normal. Wally Bunker's pitch, that's a 4-3, and that is a range play. Black is being read first in this game. 2-3 for Lee May, that is a ground ball to short. The ball was hit to Aparicio. His range is a 5. He should make that, and he does. So the play is going to go to first base. Rico Cardi's base running rating is a 2. In order for him to get the third, he has to beat the die roll. It is a 5. He does not, so Cardi holds at, for, at second base. But May is out at first on a ground out. The infield. next batter will be, of course, be right fielder hammering Hank Aaron. Not one of his better years home run-wise. He hit 24 home runs that year, but he was still pretty – he was still up and coming, Hank Aaron, but he was becoming uh, what they expect him to be for the Braves. So hammering Hank is the batter. Wally Bunker, 4-5 against the righty. That's a possible strikeout of 5, plus 1 is a 6. 14 on the dice. He will not go. Aaron, 6-4, and Aaron passed a single past the second baseman, and that is a base hit. Rico Cardi's base running rating is a 2. To get from second to home on an S4, he needs a 2, and he will have that 2, and Cardi will score. Hank Aaron gets an RBI single. And just like that, in the top of the first inning, the Braves get a 1-0 lead. RBI single by Aaron. From one Hall of Famer to another Hall of Famer, here is third baseman Eddie Matthews. Anything on the strat roll? Infield is halfway, a 10. Nothing going on. Wally Bunker's pitch, 1-2, possible wild pitch, a 6. 
And, yep, that is a wild pitch from Wally Bunker, and Aaron will go to second. And now the infield will get back to normal because there is nothing going on there with the no double play chance. We'll see if the strat die re-roll the strat die. A 19, Eddie Matthews, uh, nothing going on there. With a bunt rating of zero, nothing happening. So we do it again. 5-5, five, five, possible walk. That's the writing 19, and he walks Eddie Matthews. So Wally Bunker with an ARA of 2.69. Has already given up three hits. I've got two hits and a walk. And now the batter for the Braves will be the catcher, Joe Torrey. Runners at first and second, halfway infield. Anything going on on Strat? That is a one. Hank Aaron's attempt rating to to steal would be a would be a one to steal third. I'm going to override that and not call it. As I use the strat right as a strike roll, the strike roll as a bench manager tells me what I can maybe do this at bat as the manager, but I do have the right to overrule it. Still one out, runners at first and second. The infield is halfway. Wally Bunker will pitch. 6 3. That is another possible walk. A, a, an 8, a 12 on the die, and there is no walk there. We'll see a 1 2 on Tory. That is a fly ball hit to left field. Against the right, and there's an 18 on the dice, and it will just miss a triple. That is a fly ball to right, and he just misses it. Against the right, and it'll be a 17 and 18 on the die. Does not get it. That's going to be the second out. Hank Aaron, his base running rating is a 5. And the ball was hit. To, it's a That's his base running rating. So does he make it? Does he? Does he make it to third? It needs that be a two, and he does. Yeah, it's basically it has to beat the die roll, and it does. So Hank Aaron on a deep fly ball to right. Aaron will advance to third, and there are now two outs. Torrey hits it near at the warning track, but not good enough. Actually, it was a fly ball to center. Was that a fly ball to center field? That should be okay. It's still some track three from base running rating. He still makes it, even with the two. Two men out and feel back to normal. That will bring up the first baseman, Gene Oliver. Runners at the corners with two outs. Wally Bunker, 2-3. Possible throwing error. Oh, boy. We'll see what happens here. Gene Oliver, 3-5. And that is a ground ball to third. And the ball is hit to Robinson. His error rating is a 6. But that's a 9 on the board. He's going to make the play. He'll throw to first and get the out. And that will do it as the human vacuum cleaner does not make the error there. So the Braves get one run on two hits and a walk, and they take the early lead going into the bottom of the first. It is now one to nothing over the O's. Starting pitcher for the 1964 Milwaukee Braves will be Tony Cloninger. He was 19 and 14 with a 3.56 ERA. The Baltimore Orioles had a record of 97 and 65 in 1964. Bottom of the first, leading off for the O's will be center fielder Jackie Brandt. One three, Cloninger strikeout against the righty 11 plus one is a 12, 15 too high. One five for Brandt's card, ground out to third. One man down. That brings up a Hall of Famer, shortstop Luis Aparicio. 1-1, one, one, Cloninger card against the righty. That is a star line, and that is going to be a ground out to third again. Against a right-hander. And that will bring up first baseman Norm Seaburn. Cloninger, 3-2. That's at the ballpark at Memorial Stadium. 6-4. And that is a double hit the right field. Seaburn, a two-out double. Not too shabby. He gets a little help from the ballpark. And now they'll bring up another Hall of Famer, third baseman Brooks Robinson, the human vacuum cleaner. No strat rolls since there's two outs. I don't roll strat on two outs. 6-2, possible wild pitch, and a 6. Yep, that's going to move Seaburn to third. So both these pitchers have given up wild pitches. 
We'll do it again. Robinson again. We'll do it again. Cloninger, 4-6. And that is a possible strikeout against the righty. A 6 plus 1 is a 7-12. Robinson will swing. And that is a 5-6. And he grounds out to second. Nothing for the Orioles. They got one hit at the end of one. The Braves lead at one nothing. I am really falling in love with inside pitch. Top of the second coming up. Leading off for the Braves is going to be shortstop Dennis Menke. 2-3 on Bunker's card. Possible error on a throw. 6-5, and that is going to be a double into center field. Dennis Menke, 6-5 against the right-handed pitcher. That is a double. There's no error on the hit. You only take the error. You only call the, you only check a throwing error if there's going to be a advancement on base. So there is, he just got on base. Well, that is a double for Menke. Runner at second base for the Braves. And that will bring up second baseman Frank Bowling. Anything on strat roll? A four. Bowling's bunt rating is a five. He, uh, nothing going on there. And Mankey's at bunt attempt is a one. Nope, nothing going on. Normal hit coming up. Bunker, four, six. Range play. One, four. That is a ball hit to left field. So first we check to see if the ball is, if the left fielder makes the play. Boog Powell is out there. His range is a two. Does he make the play? He does not. So now, now you roll. So and that is a hit, and that is a question mark. Is what that is the left? Now you roll to see what's on here. And against a right-hander, it is a seventeen. So he doesn't. So even though this was higher as a fly ball to right field, he doesn't make it. So it still drops for a hit. Is it a single or a double? It's a single. So it becomes an S seven. On the range play, fly ball to fly ball. Actually, it's a fly ball to left field. Menke's base running rating is a three. To get second to home on an S7 is a plus one, makes him a four. Powell's arm, Powell's arm is a plus one, so a five. So a one to five, one to five, Menke, on a one to five, Menke scores six, someone's out. It is a five. Menke will score. He does score from second on the RBI single by bowling. And it is now 2 nothing Braves. And that will bring up the pitcher, Tony Cloninger. Pull my chair up here, get a little bit more comfortable. Bowling on it first. Bunker already getting hit early here. Anything on the strat roll? That is a four. Bowling is, nope, nothing going on. Bunker's pitch, 6-1. That is a strikeout possibility with a 15 plus 1 to 16, and Cloninger is out. He will do the whiff, and there's one out. Top of the order for the Braves, there's Rico Cardi. Anything again going on? A 14, no. Bunker, 2-1. That is a walk plus 10. And against a right hander to 12 makes it a 22. That's an automatic walk. There's no walk adjustment on Memorial Stadium, so he automatically walks Cardi. Second time Cardi's been on base. Of course, the infield is halfway. Runners at first and second now for May. Anything on strap? A six. Nope, nothing happening there. One out. Runners first and second in field half. May the batter now for the Braves. A 3-1. That is an automatic star line. And that is a one. And that is a ground ball to second base. May's double play rating is a one. Zero from there. But the NFL halfway is a two. Shortstop is automatically the pivot man since the ball was hit to second. And that is Aparicio. His arm rating is a zero. So a one to two, they turn the double play. And they do not. So bowling will advance to third. 
Rico Cardi's base running rating is is lower than the die. So Cardi is out at second. May makes it to first on a fielder's choice. That is two outs. Runners at the corners are two men down, and that will bring up that guy. Infield is going to be back to normal. Keep on forgetting also on the infield half. When an infield is halfway, the base runner of the first, the base running rating is lowered by one as well. But it didn't make a difference. He was still out. Runners at the corners, two outs. Bunker got to go up against Hammer and Hank. Five six, and that is a possible five five six. That is a possible strikeout. Aaron against the righty is a five plus one's a six. Fourteen. Aaron does not strike out. Three one hits a fly ball to left feet. Fly ball to left field against the righty, and that is an eight, and that is going to be a double for Hank Aaron. So bowling will score. Autom bowling scores automatically. He comes through. Roll for Aaron. Aaron gets a double. May automatically goes to third. His base running rating is a four, plus for two outs is a five. The ball was hit to left field. Powell's arm is an autumn plus one is a six. So there is no roll. He automatic may and a fly ball to left a double to left field and a minus one first to home, but that's crossed out. So that's gonna be a one to five, I believe. So six minus one plus the one. Yeah, but May scores anyway. May scores anyway. There is no throw for May. It'll keep Aaron at second. So two runs come in, and the Braves are now up four to nothing on Baltimore. As Aaron gets his second hit of the night. On a big double. And now four nothing Braves as Wally Bunker getting hit early. And that will bring up Eddie Matthews. Infield back to normal. Aaron on its second. 3-2 on Bunker's card. That's a blank. 2-1 on Matthew's card. That's a star line four. That's going to be a ground out to short, and that'll end the inning. The Braves pick up three runs on one, two, three hits in that inning and a walk. We go to the bottom of the second. Braves leading 4 nothing. And remember, they are the lower seed in the uh, – in, in this tournament against the Orioles. The Orioles are supposed to be the better team, but right now Milwaukee hitting them hard. Bomb the second coming up. Leading off for the O's will be left fielder Boog Powell. And that man could hit home runs. That man had some serious power. He was big. He was ripped. For a guy from the 60s, Boog Powell was a beast. As Michael Peterson says, taking a break from football, welcome to Memorial Stadium. Cloninger will get it, will pitch it. 6-1, strikeout plus 10 against a righty. That makes it a 21 automatically. Powell will swing and miss and go back to the bench for one out. Next batter is right fielder Sam Bowens. 1-5, Cloninger against the righty. That's a blank. Bowens, 3-2. That's a ground out to first. The more I play the since I pitched, the more I love it. Here is Dick Brown. He's the catcher. 5-4 on Cloninger's card, and that is a star line against the righty, and that is just going to be a fly out to center, and it's a 1-2-3 inning for the O's. And at the end of two, the Braves are all over them, 4-0. How about my Dolphins winning today, Michael Peterson? Oh, uh, that's right, you're a Yankee fan. You're a Jet fan? I'm sorry, I'm a Dolphins fan. I can't, uh, can't stand the Jets. I hate them like poison, but... Uh, but if you're a Yankee fan, that means you probably like the Giants. So, I don't know. Let me know what you think there, Mike. Top of the third inning, Bunker will come back out. and He's been getting hit early. Leading off for the Braves will be Joe Torre. 
Bunker 5-1, strikeout possibility. 7 plus 1 is 8, 15 too high. Giants fan. There you go. And I have nothing against the Giants. I like the Giants. They did me a favor a number of years ago. 5-2 for Joe Torre. That's a ground out to second. Your Giants did me a favor a couple years ago. You beat the Patriots in the Super Bowl and still kept my Dolphins as the only undefeated team. So I am a Gi I have nothing against the Giants. I like the Giants. I have nothing against them. Never had an issue with the NYG. I hate the NYJ. And my Dolphins shut them out today. I am ecstatic. If you were to tell me my Dolphins would be three, if you were to tell me at the start of the season Miami would be three and three, okay, in six weeks in the season and second place behind and second place behind the Buffalo the Buffalo Bills, I would take that in a heartbeat. Did I watch the game? Which one? My Dolphins game against the Jets? Of course. The Jets are awful. That team is bad. He's always been underrated, but it was nice to see Tua get on the field finally. And he threw a pass, a couple of passes. I was very happy to see him. Here's Gene Oliver. 6-5 on Bunker's card, possible error. Oliver, 4-3. That's a ground ball to second base. Uh, Adair's error rating is a 2. That's a 12. He'll not make the error. And he will throw to first to get the out. Another ground out. Two down. And the batter now will be Dennis Mankey. Mankey doubled his last time up. The Jet highlight was the interception. Yeah. Gay should be fired tomorrow. Gay should never have been hired by the Jets. I don't know why they, they took him from us. I said, great, you can have him. Right now, Brian Flores is beginning to show me that maybe he was the right decision for the Dolphins. Wally Bunker's pitch, 3-6. Strikeout possibility, 8 plus 1 is 9. 8 on the dice, and this time Memorial Stadium helps out the O's, and Menke will go down, and that is a strikeout. 1, 2, 3, inning go the Braves. They still lead 4 to nothing. Bottom of the third. Coming up to bat for the O's will be second baseman Jerry Adair. 1, 2, Starline. Automatic star line. That's a ground out to short. And that will bring up the pitcher for the Orioles in Wally Bunker. He batted 069 as a as a uh, 069 as a pitcher. 3-6 on Cloninger's card. Strikeout 24. That's it. I don't even have to roll for that. That's a strikeout. 24 check. You just gotta look at there and see what it is. And he strikes out Bunker. So two down, and now the top of the order for the Orioles and Jackie Brandt. As Daniel Patani comes me here and joins me, and Steeler fan joins me here. Nice win for your Steelers there, uh, Matt. Great win for you guys. Took out the Browns, and how about my Dolphins? We're at 500. Can't be had. I cannot be, can't be angry at that. I'll take three and three after six weeks of the season, no problem. Probably won't beat the Rams next week, but you know what? I have no problem to losing the better teams. Cloninger will pitch to Brandt. That is a 6-2. A wild pitch is fouled away. 6-3. That is a possible walk on a left, an 11, and a 3. And Cloninger walks Brandt. Two out walk. And that will bring up Aparicio. Nice shutout win. We shut the Jets out. Another thing, we shut, we shut them out. That's another great thing about beating the Jets. We shut them out. First time we shut the Jets out since 1982 when a guy by the name of A.J. Dewey had a couple of interceptions and won and beat the Jets in the AFC Championship game. Jets had a quarterback that day by the name of Richard Todd. David Woodley was the quarterback, though, for the Dolphins. Cloninger. 1-2 for Cloninger. That's a star line. He's getting a lot of good rules today. And that's a ground out to second base. And the inning is over. There was a walk, but that's all for Baltimore. Three innings in the books. The Braves are up 4 nothing on a better Baltimore Orioles team. Or at least supposed to be. But in a one-and-gone tournament, but in a one game, in a one game for all the marbles, you really don't know what to expect. We go to the top of the fourth. Who leads off for the Braves? So that would be Frank Bowling.
five four error on a grounder possibility three four and that is going to be a ground ball to third so that ball is hit to robinson his error rating is a six and he is going to commit an error he commits an error he boots the ball so bowling will be on it first So he is safe at first. That is an E. That's an E5 on Brooks Robinson. Brooks Robinson had great range. Don't get me wrong. His range in this game was a five. He's got the best range. He's got the best range you could have. But Brooks Robinson did commit his share of errors. Yes, his inside pitch. Yes, I love it. Is that the O's logo from that year? Yes, it is. That is the logo they used in 64. All my logos are for that seat for that year. For every year I have, I print them, I print them out. Frank Bowling is on first base, and that will bring up the pitcher, Tony Cloninger. Let's see if there's going to be anything on strat. A 12, and his bunt rating is a three. And no bunt is called, so I'm going to let Cloninger hit away. 4-2, infield, of course, is halfway. 4-2 for Bunker, and that is a possible strikeout. 15 plus 1 is 16, and Cloninger is out of there. So one man out. And that will bring up Rico Cardi. Dang, I keep on dropping the darn dice. Let's see. 15, nothing going on there. One out still. Rico Cardi, 1-6 for Bunker. Hit by pitch possibility. Four, minus four is a zero. No hit by pitch, so Cardi will get the swing. 4-2, and that is going to be a single to right field. Base hit. Bowling's base running rating is a two. In order to get the third base, you add two, so that's a four. The right fielder is Bowens. He has no arm, so a one to four. He will get there. Five, he holds. And a six, someone's out, and that is a six. So on a six-six, he does advance. Bowling does advance to third. However, Rico Cardi is caught in a is caught in a rundown. Is caught in a rundown. So we roll a die. It's a three, and in order, for, and his base run rating is a two, and that three is higher than his rating. So he is out. He is out of there, trying to get to second. Bowling does advance to third, though. Bacardi is out, and there are two outs. So Cardi does get a base hit, but he's thrown out. But Bowling does get to third on a lead runner advance. And now the batter will be Lee May with two outs, and the Orioles will go back to a – answers my next question, rare plays. Rico Cardi, decent outfielder. Yeah. Here's Lee May with a runner at third. And two outs now. Baltimore goes back to normal infield. 1-1. One, one, that is a blank. Lee May, 5-5. Five, five. Ground out to third. Ground out to first. And that will end the inning. So no runs from Milwaukee. There was a hit and an error. It's still 4-0 Braves. And yes, inside pitch is a great game. Yes, it is. Uh, I'm really falling in love with it. Me and payoff pitch, payoff pitch and inside pitcher, I love them both at the same and back rate. I love payoff pitch because I can broadcast it. I love inside pitch because it's a little bit it's a little bit deeper. Bottom of the fourth inning, 4 nothing. Tony Cloninger gets back on the mound. And here is Norm Seaburn leading off for Baltimore. He doubled his last time up, and he has the only hit for the O's in this game. 1-4 for Cloninger. Possible home run check against the lefty. It's a 1-2. A 15 is no home run, so Seidman will swing. A 5-5 five, five for him, and against the righty, that's going to be a double. Seaburn gets his second double of the game. That's a double to left. Double to left, and now the batter will be Brooks Robinson. See if the strat die says anything. That is a 10. Nothing going on. Runner at second base. The human vacuum, the human vacuum cleaner is up. 
Cloninger, 1-2. That is a star line automatic against a righty. That's a star line. And that is going to be a ground ball to short. So we know Robinson's definitely out. Seaburn's base running rating is a 2. In order to get in order to get the shortstop, he has to beat a 1D6 roll. So he needs to beat a 1 or 2 and a 4. He does not. So Seaburn stays at second base, and there is one out. And that will bring up Boog Powell. For those of you who remember Boog Powell, you do know this guy was an absolute beast, right? You saw how you, I've seen, I've seen, I never saw him play, of course, but I've seen the, I've watched a lot of seasons in the 60s and such, so watched baseball then. And Boog Powell, is it me or did that guy look like, you know, I mean, is it me or did Boog Powell look like the way uh, Albert Pujols looks now? Yeah, he was a fearsome slugger. He sure was. He had 39 home runs for the O's in 64. Seaburn on its second. One out. See if the strat says anything. And that is a two. Uh, there's a temp rate. It will be a possible. Uh, there is. Uh, nope. There's no hit and run. So because you don't have a runner on first. So no. So nothing going on. So we'll have a normal play. Two five for Cloninger. That is a strikeout plus 10. And against the righty pitcher, against the right hander, makes it a 21. That's an automatic out. Don't even have to roll. And Powell strikes out for the second time in this game. And now the batter will be Sam Bowens. I do not roll strat die on set on two outs. 5-4 on Cloninger. That's a star line. He's getting a lot of breaks. And that's going to be a fly out the right. And once again... Seaburn gets a double, and the Orioles can't do anything with it. No runs and a hit. It's still 4 nothing. Milwaukee Braves. Frank Howard, yeah. Top of the fifth. And leading off for the Milwaukee Braves is that guy. Wally Bunker has to deal with the hammer, and Aaron is two for two. He singled and doubled. Bunker, three, six. Strikeout possibility, a right. That's a five plus one is a six. That's a three. He does get Aaron on strikes. One out. From one Hall of Famer to another, here's Eddie Matthews. Five, five on Bunker's card. Walk. Against a ninth, that's a 19, and a six definitely will do that, and he walks Matthews. Second time Eddie has been walked today. Brings up another Hall of Famer, Joe Torrey, although he's in for his managing. Although a lot of people don't seem to realize Joe Torrey, I mean, he's in there as a manager, not a player, but you know, Joe Torrey, that man was a good ball player. He was very, he belongs, you know, if you're going to put him in the Hall of, of, of the Fame for his manager, I'll put Joe Torre in the hall, the very good as a player, at least the hall, the very good. Matthew's on at first, infield half, anything going on? A one, uh, do I want to steal with him? Uh, he's got a 10, uh, Bunker make it a 12, and the arm for Brown is a zero, one to 12 from the steal. Uh, you know what, you're up by four runs, no. I'll call off the steal and let Torrey hit. As I said, I use – no, it wouldn't be a hit and run because it actually fell within a steal rating here. A hit and run would have been a two or th a two to three. And as I said, I use the strategy die as a suggestion. It's my bench coach telling me what I could do. I can always overrule. I can always overrule it. A one to 12, and I think you're up by four nothing. I think you let Joe Torrey hit. Plus, Torrey backs 321. Two six on Bunker's card. That's a star line, though. And that is going to be a three, and that's a ground ball to first. So, Torrey's double play rating is a three, zero, and the infield half is a four. The pivot man on a ground ball to first base with a right-hander batter up is the second baseman, and that is a dare. His pivot rating is a plus one. That's a five. So, one to five, they turn two. They do, and that's a three. That is a three, four, three, double play, side retired.
No runs, no hits, no errors. Then it was a walk. We go to the bottom of the fifth inning. Leading off for the O's will be Dick Brown. Did not work either way. Yeah, exactly, right? 4-4, four, four, Cloninger's car. That is a blank against the right. 6-1 on Brown's car. That's a fly out to center field. One man down. The batter will be Adair. Cloninger, 4-5. Possible home run against the righty. That is a 6. There's nothing here from Memorial. That is a 6, but an 11 on the die. Adair doesn't get it. So Adair will have to swing, and it's a 1-5, and he'll have to settle for a lazy fly ball to left. And that's the second out. That's supposed to bring up the pitcher, Wally Bunker. Uh, let me see where he's at. And let me see where he's at with uh, tiredness. One, two, three, four, five, six. He's six batters away from tiredness. It's a 4 nothing game, but nobody's on base. Uh, I'll let Bunker hit. This is 60s baseball, and he would probably hit in this case. Two outs. Cloninger, 6-1, strikeout plus 10, and we know for we know for sure that's a K. It's a 1-2-3 inning for the Orioles. Five innings in the books. The Braves lead it 4-0. Top of the sixth coming up. My next game scheduled after this will probably have two games tomorrow. Uh, game number seven will be the Los Angeles Angels versus the San Francisco Giants. And game number eight is the Pittsburgh Pirates against the Detroit Tigers. Remember, there is this is a tournament. I'm using the overall records for seeding. So there's no American League versus American League or National League versus National League. It's every team. This is based really, it's really pretty much based on uh, how Red Sox fans won and done. So I, let's give him the credit. This is his idea. Uh, who leads off? Gene Oliver leads off for the Braves in the top of the sixth. One four bunkers card. That is a star line, and that is going to be a ground out to second. Third time in a row that Oliver is grounded out. Here's Dennis Menke. He's one for two. He got a double and a strut. He's one for two. He got a double early in the game. 3-4, that's a star line, and that's a fly out to center. And now Frank Bowling. 4-2, that is a strikeout against the righty, and that is an 8, plus 1 is a 9, that's a 16, no strikeout. Bowling will swing, and a 1-4, he, he hits a ball, hit the left field. And that is a seven, and against a righty, that is going to be a base hit. Frank Bowling gets a two-out single. Base hit for Bowling, and that does bring up Tony Cloninger. And he, let me see, his, uh, what has he got, 29? So he is, Cloninger is very strong right now. I just can't see taking him out, even with a runner on first, with two outs here in the sixth. Cloninger will hit. Let's see if this – no strat. And Cloninger actually not a bad hitter, bad at 241. 5-1 on Bunker's card. That's a strikeout possibility of 15 plus 116, and Cloninger goes down on strikes anyway. As he has struck out all three times. No runs and a hit for the Braves. Still 4-0. Bottom of the sixth. Top of the batting order for the Baltimore Orioles. Here's Jackie Brandt. One four. Possible home run check against the righty. It needs to be a one. That's a 16, so nope. So Brandt will swing. Three three. That's a fly out to center. That will bring up Luis Aparicio. 1-6, strikeout. Right-handed pitcher is a 5, plus 1's a 6, a 4. He strikes out Aparicio. 
And that's two outs. Cloninger did have 163 strikeouts in 64. He's got one, two, three, four, five. That's his fifth of the game. And now here's Norm Seaburn. Seaburn is the only guy that's gotten hits off of Cloninger. He's two for two with two doubles. Let's see if Cloninger learned anything. Five, six. Strikeout, 10, plus one is 11, 15, no. Seaburn swings. That's a 1-2, and that's a ground out to second. And he finally gets him out, and that's a 1-2-3 inning for Cloninger. Braves still leading 4 to nothing in this one-and-done game against the Baltimore Orioles for 64. Top of the seventh coming up. Rapidly moving game. Rico Cardi will bat first for Milwaukee. Cardi having a good game. He's two for two. A single and a double, and he walked. And this will probably be Bunker's last inning. He will be tired after the second batter. 6-5 on Bunker's card. Possible error. Cardi, 4-3. And that's a fly ball to center field. That is a seven. The ball is hit to Brandt, but his error rating is a four. He will make the catch. One out. No error. And for fly out, for straightway flyouts, they have to be under the error rating, and it has to be an odd number for flyouts to the outfield. Here's Lee May. Bunker, 3-2. That's a blank. May 6-3, ground out to first. And now Bunker is tired. So this will probably be his, maybe his last batter. And, of course, his last batter would have to be that guy. Bunker's pitch, 3-2. That's a blank. Aaron will swing at it. To six, and that's a ground ball to third, and that's a one, two, three inning for the Braves. So since Wally Bunker gave up the four runs in the first in the first run, the four runs in the early part of the game, he has settled down. But it is still four nothing in one game for all the marbles here to move on to the next round. Bottom of the seventh coming up. And leading off for the O's in the bottom of the seventh is the vacuum cleaner. 2-1. That is a strikeout possibility against the right. Six plus one is seven. It's a seven. And in this case, Memorial Stadium hurts the Orioles. And he strikes out. Brooks Robinson saying, man, what, why can't we build a beautiful, why can't we build a beautiful stadium called Oriole Park at Camden Yards? Well, that won't happen for about 30 years. One man down here is Boog Powell. 3-4, possible error on a grounder. 3-3, three, three, that is a star line four, and that is a ground ball to second base. Bowling is the, bowling is the second baseman. Error rating is a four, and that is a three, and that is an error. He commits an error, and Powell's going to get the first. And that is an E4, and that is the first error on the Braves. And puts Powell on at first base as he boots the ball, and the batter will be Sam Bowens. No strat roll since now four since it's now a four nothing game and there's three innings left so now there is no strat roll so it's automatically going here the infield of course will be halfway Cloninger four two that's at the ballpark haven't had many of those today one two from Memorial Stadium that is a ground ball to first. Sam Bowens' double play rating is a three. Cloninger plus one is a four. With the infield half, it is a five. 
And Bowens is a right-handed batter, so that means that the shortstop is the is the pivot man. And that's Mankey, and there's nothing there. So a one to five, they turn two. They do. And that is third base to that is three six three double play inning over. No runs, no hits, one error. Still four nothing Braves. As Bowens grounds out. We go to the top of the eighth. We're going to see a new pitcher as Bunker is done. The Orioles are going to go to the pen. The leadoff batter for the Braves is Eddie Matthews. They got a lefty and two righties coming up, so we'll probably see a right-hander come up for the, for the O's. Let's see who they want to bring in. And the, Ori the Orioles are going to bring in Dick Hall. He'll take over on the mound. Dick Hall actually has his own batting card, which is kind of interesting. And he would be due to bat third, so I will get his batting card anyway. Still put it where it needs to be, since we all use the pitchers will hit in 64. Dick Hall will take over for the O's as Bunker is done. And he'll pitch to Eddie Matthews, top of the eighth. Paul's got seven batters he can face. Let's see what we got. Four, six. And that is a possible home run check. Hall against the lefty. That is a one to six. That is a 14. Not happening. Matthews will go ahead and hit. And that's a single and, a set and past the second baseman. That's a base hit. Base hit for Eddie Matthews. He goes to first. The batter will be Joe Torrey. Infield halfway. No strat roll. He has no pickoff play, so there's another, another reason why not to throw a strat roll. One, two for Dick Hall. That's a star line. And that's a three. And that is a fly ball to right field. And that's going to be an out. One man down. Matthews, of course, holds it first. Fly out to right. Here is Gene Oliver. 6-2 on Hall's card. That is a range play at the park. 3-5. And that is a blank. So we got a rare play. I've been getting a rare play pretty much every game. I've been getting a rare play every game. Rare play, men on base. We re-roll the dice. See what we got. It is a 2-6. If runner on first, ball hit to right side, strikes runner. Runner out, batter credited with single, otherwise G3. So Eddie Matthews is out. Oliver is on first, and there are two outs. As Eddie Matthews couldn't get out the way of the couldn't get out of the way of the ball. All right. So there's two outs. So it's a base hit, but uh Base hit, but Matthews is out for Oliver. Two men down now. The infield can be normal for Dennis Mankey. So Memorial Stadium doesn't help the Braves in any way in that case. 5-2. That's a star line. That'll probably go in the inning, and that is a fly out to center. And that will end the inning. So no runs for the Braves. They got two hits, but couldn't do anything with it. We go to the bottom of the eighth. Still 4 nothing Milwaukee. Holding on to this. Dick Brown leads off for the Orioles. Tony Cloninger, and he's still got a few batters he can go. He is due to bat second, so they're going to hope to see if Cloninger can get through the bottom of the eighth inning. Let's play some more baseball. Cloninger, 6-4, star line. And that is a fly out to left. He is getting a lot of star lines. Cloninger, that 3.56 ERA looks really, really blown up the way Cloninger is doing a great job today. He is shutting down this Orioles lineup, one down. 
And the batter is Jerry Adair. Remember, in the second games, it'll be the number two starters that'll be using for the teams that made there. You know, of course, the teams that did not play their first game that had to buy, all right, will get their number one starter out there. And I'm going by ERA. So the starter with the lowest ERA, not the most starts, but the lowest ERA uh, was put in a certain order. Cloninger will pitch to Adair. 1 6. That's a strikeout. Right handed batter plus 1 7 and 8. 20. No strikeout. Adair will hit. 4 2. And he grounds out to second. Dick Hall due to bat. He did bat 125, but of course they'll take him out. You're not going to with two outs. So Hall will be out of there. They'll bring in a pinch hitter for the O's. See who they want to bring in. And he's a righty, so you want a lefty. And it looks like it's going to be Charlie Lau. He will pinch it. Two outs, bottom of the eighth. 6-5 on Cloninger. Range play at the park. 6-4. And that is a double hit to right field. The ball is hit to right. Hank Aaron's range is a 4. A 1-4, to four, he gets this. And he does. It's a high hit ball deep into the gap. Aaron racing over, racing over, and he gets there, makes the catch. Takes a double away from Charlie Lau. Side retired. And that becomes a fly ball to right. Great play by Aaron. Takes away a base hit. And Baltimore just, and everybody on the Baltimore bench is just shaking their head. They're just saying, man, what do we got to do to get a break? Nothing for the Baltimore Orioles at the end of eight. Still for nothing Braves. Frank Bowling will lead off from Milwaukee. We'll see a new pitcher for the O's. It'll be a righty, I'm pretty sure. See who they're going to want to bring in. And it is going to be... It's going to be Dave Vineyard. He will come on and pitch for the O's. As we go to the top of the ninth... Frank Bowling leads off. Dave Vineyard will pitch for the Orioles. 4-5 on his card. That is a blank. He's not tired. 2-2 two, two on Bowling's card. A righty. That's a ground out to second. One man out. Tony Collinger is due to bat. They will bring in a pinch hitter as he has done his job. So Cloninger is going to come out. Milwaukee will go to their closer, I'm sure, for the ninth inning. We'll see a pinch hitter for the Braves. And against the righty, we'll see what they got. And it's going to be Ed Bailey. He will pinch it, even though he's a catcher, but he'll pinch it. Ed Bailey against Dave Vineyard. One out. 5-3. That's a walk. 13 and on one, and he walks the pitch, and he walks the pinch hitter. So Vineyard walks Bailey. Insurance run on base, and the batter is Cardi. Infield halfway, no strat roll. Five four. That's a strikeout plus ten. That would be a nineteen. That would then the bank would make it a twenty. I don't have to look at the. I don't have to look at the uh, blue die. I already know that's a strikeout. So Cardi goes down even though it was a two. Two outs now, and now it's Lee May. 5-4. Another strikeout plus 10. That becomes a 15 plus one, a 16, a four, and he strikes out May. And that will do it for the Braves. No runs, no hits. There was a walk, but the Braves are leading four to nothing. They'll turn it to their closer. Remember, I'm not using fatigue. In this tournament, everybody is available on the rosters. Bottom of the ninth inning. 
Let's see who the Braves closer was. Coming on to pitch for the Milwaukee Braves will be Bobby Tiefenauer. I guess that's how you pronounce his name. He had 13, he had 13 saves that year. And he will come in and pitch. Bobby Tiefenauer will pitch for the Braves. I guess it's how to pronounce it. I don't know. Steeler fan maybe can help me. Is that Tiefenauer or Tiefenauer? I'm not sure. But he will pitch for the Braves. He will have to deal with the top of the batting order for the Orioles, and that is Jackie Brandt. Orioles are down to the last three outs. Tiefenauer, 2-6. And against the righty, that is a blank. Brandt, 4-1. Fly ball to right field. One out. Luis Aparicio. Tiefenauer's pitch. 5-2. Strikeout. Possibility five plus one is six, 13. No strikeout. Aparicio, one, three, one, three, and that is a fly out to right. Two men down. Last chance for the Orioles is Norm Seaburn. He is the only one with hits. Two doubles. He's the only one that's gotten hits. Milwaukee Braves pitching was excellent. Tiefenauer will pitch to Seaburn. 5-3. And against the lefty, that's a possible home run check. Against the righty, that's a 7. But a 20 is too high. Seaburn does not get the home run. So now he gets the swing. 3-1. And Seaburn gets a base hit. He'll keep this game alive. That is a single to center. Seaburn claps his hands, gets a two-out single. He'll go to first. And the batter will be Brooks Robinson. Seaburn looks at the Baltimore dugout, say, hey, look, guys, if I can do it, you guys can do, you know. No strat roll. Tiefenauer will pitch. 5-1, strikeout possibility right. Six plus one is seven. That's a six. Robinson swinging a miss, struck him out. And that's the game. No runs, a hit for Baltimore. And this Baltimore Orioles team that had a record of 97 and 65, that was a pretty lethargic showing in this game as the Milwaukee Braves shut out the Baltimore Orioles 4 to nothing. And Norm Seaburn is the only guy that got hits for the Orioles. All three hits that the Orioles had in this game were attributed to him. Nobody else could do a darn thing. Give you guys that final line score here. For the Milwaukee Braves, four runs, nine hits, and an error. For the Baltimore Orioles, no runs, three hits, and one error. Tony Clonger gets the win. And Bunker takes the loss. And even though, and there was no save. And that will do it. <laughs> wow. I expected a lot. I expect Tiffin, maybe Tiffin Hour. No E, but also not a tie sound. Tiffin like Kiffin. Okay. So Tiffin Hour. All right. I believe that. That will do good for me. Wow. Uh, a 1964 Orioles team. That was 97 and 65 with players such as Powell, Robinson, Aparicio, and Braves pitching Tony Cloninger with an ERA of like 3.56 completely shuts down this Orioles team. The fans here at Memorial Stadium are disheartened. They throw can't they no, they don't throw anything on the field. They just throw they throw their beer in the garbage and they're heading home. But the Milwaukee Braves will advance to the next round. They will advance, and that will do it for me tonight as game six comes to a close. Next game, we'll probably do two games tomorrow. Next game up is game number seven. The Los Angeles Angels will take on the San Francisco Giants.
And yes, people, the Angels actually, uh, what the Los Angeles, the Angels actually had, the Los Angeles Angels actually had a better record that year than the Los Angeles Dodgers. The Angels were 82 and 80, and the Dodgers were 80 and 82. And that's why the Angels are the higher seed. But they got to take on San Francisco at, um, at six, 1964. I believe that's at the stick. So I believe that's at Candlestick. That might be at Seals. I'll have to look. Anyway, thank you all. Michael Peterson, Steeler fan, 1933, Bleacher Bums Gaming, Anthony, Daniel Patani. Thank you all for joining me here for a nice little game of inside pitch baseball. And we'll see you guys tomorrow. And we'll see you guys tomorrow. Remember, lots more inside pitch coming up. And of course, the payoff pitch 1985 season will begin in a couple of weeks. So uh, join me for there. Stay safe, stay healthy, stay smart, and stay strong. Thank you all for joining me. Final score, Braves over the Orioles for zilch. They move on. The O's go home. Thank you, thank you guys later, guys. Have a good night.